This temple which I am going today celebrates a menstruating goddess. Unbelievable, right? Right now I am in Kamakya, Assam and we are going to Ma Kamakya temple. This temple is dedicated to Ma Kamakya or Kameshwari. It is one of the oldest and most revered centers of tantric practices in India. With pure devotion, visitors can sense the immense energy here. Not only the temple, but the entire Nilachal Hills is powerful and related to the temple. The temple complex is surrounded by individual temples dedicated to the 10 Mahavidyas of Shaktism namely Goddess Kali, Goddess Tara, Goddess Tripura Sundari, Goddess Bhuvaneshwari, Goddess Bhairavi, Goddess Chinnamasta, Goddess Thumavadi, Goddess Bhagalamugi, Goddess Madanki and Goddess Kamalatmika. Among these, Goddess Tripura Sundari, Goddess Madanki and Goddess Kamala are housed within the main temple, while the other seven are located in separate temples. This arrangement is rare and uncommon, highlighting the temple's significance in Shaktism. Ma Kamakya has 12 arms and 6 heads of varying colors white, red, yellow, green, black and colorful. Each head has a third eye. She is wearing jewelry and red flowers such as hibiscus. She is seated upon a lotus directly on the top of God Shiva who in turn lies atop a lion. To each side of her sit God Brahma and God Vishnu who are each seated upon a lotus as well. That's why hibiscus and lotus are the main flowers used to worship Devi. The current temple structure dates back to the 8th century, but the Garbhagriha is much older than that. A radiocarbon isotope age determination test conducted by the Department of Geosciences at the University of Guwahati unveiled some astonishing revelation about the temple. According to the findings, the bottom layer of the temple dates back more than 2,200 years, while the second layer from the bottom is approximately 1,500 years old. Unique from other temples, there is no sculpture to worship in Kamakya. Instead, the goddess is manifested through a natural underground spring flowing through a yoni-shaped cleft in the bedrock. And this temple is one of the 51 Shaktipidas. The origin of the Shaktipida at the site is associated with the goddess Sadi who married god Shiva. Daksha, her father was unhappy with his daughter's choice of husband. And when he performed a grand yajna for all deities, he did not invite god Shiva or goddess Sadi. Goddess Sadi, however, went to the sacrifice. Daksha humiliated God Shiva and Goddess Sadi couldn't bear the insults toward her husband. So she jumped into the fire and left her body. Meanwhile, God Shiva was stricken with grief and rage at the loss of his wife. He threw two locks of his hair on the ground and from it emerged God Virabhadra and Goddess Mahakali. God Virabhadra and Goddess Mahakali destroyed the sacrifice while the former killed Daksha by cutting off his head and burning it. After Daksha's family and the other gods prayed to God Shiva to restore his life, God Shiva ordered the head of the sacrificial god to be brought to him. The god's head was later fixed on Daksha's body. God Shiva put Goddess Sadi's body over his shoulder and began his dance of cosmic destruction. The other gods, afraid of the destruction of three worlds, asked God Vishnu for help to ease the anger of God Shiva. God Vishnu sent his weapon Sudarsana Chakra to destroy the corpse of Goddess Sadi. Pieces of her body fell until God Shiva was left without a body to carry. Seeing this, God Shiva sat down to do Mahatapasya or Great Penance. There are 51 pieces of Goddess Sadi's body scattered across the Indian subcontinent. These places are called Shakti Pedas and are dedicated to various powerful goddesses. Kamarupa is the region in which the yoni or womb is said to have fallen to earth. And that yoni took the form of a woman who is called Ma Kamakya. Kamakya temple also said to have been constructed on this spot. 
Interestingly, a unique event takes place at this location every June. The Brahmaputra River near Kamakya turns red. During this period, the temple is closed for three days. There is no scientific proof behind the river turning red. On the fourth day, the temple reopens for the Devi Darshan, followed by a grand celebration, the Ambubachi Mela, dedicated to the goddess. Kamakya is also a significant center for tantric worship. A unique way of connecting with divine or spiritual energy is through specific practices such as rituals and meditation. Sadhus, saints and tantrics from all part of India gather here to practice tantra sadhana. The temple is renowned for its unique architecture, particularly its distinctive dome-like structure and intricate carvings, which are characteristic of Nilachal type of architecture. There are loads of beautiful carvings of the deities around the temple filled with red kumkum powder. Most of the things around this temple you can see are vibrant red in color. On the right side of this main temple, there is a red colored god Ganesha sculpture. There I have seen many people sticking coins over the deity. The reason behind is unknown to me. At the main entrance of the temple, you will be welcoming by two amazing golden colored lion sculptures. The worship of this temple includes both Vamachara and Dakshinachara modes, with offering typically consisting of flowers, although animal sacrifices are also part of the tradition. Around the temple, you can see many gods brought by the devotees waiting to be sacrificed at the temple Balipiram. Some animals and birds themselves come here and die. I have seen many pigeons die without being sacrificed. They don't fly away but stay over the temple walls. And in the morning, you can see some pigeons dead near the temple. To go inside the temple, we have to wash our feet or take bath in the pond in front of the north gate. Then pray to God Ganesha and take permission from him before entering the temple. Near the front gate of the temple, there is an amazing breastfeeding mother sculpture representing the mother goddess. From that, we can understand that Ma Kamakya is the mother of all beings. It's a must thing to experience the evening aarti here. It is so powerful and divine. It happens every evening in front of the north gate. Every afternoon, there is free food near the Chinnamasla Devi temple. You have to collect the coupon from Anna Seva Kendra to get the Anna Prasada. To stay right next to the temple, there is a guest house managed by the temple itself. There you can get cheap and comfortable rooms. From there, it will be very easy to reach the temple. Behind the guest house or the right side of the main temple, there is a walkway downhill which leads to the Bhairavi temple and the turtle pond. There are loads of huge turtles in the pond. You can feed bananas to the turtles. But please make sure not to throw any waste or plastic into the pond as it is a sin. And just in front of that, there is a Bhairavi temple. This is also a must visit place.
and apart from that there is an archaeological survey protected area here and here you can see a Bala Bhairava Murti beautifully carved here this is really really amazing look at this wow And there are also some other sculptures as well. Look at the minute details. It's amazing. like to visit other temples like Ma Bagalamukhi and Ma Bhuvaneshwari temple, you have to climb to the opposite side of the hill. There you can see huge Brahmaputra river and Ma Bagalamukhi temple with loads of cave inside. To reach the Mahabhavaneshwari temple, you will have to walk a bit more from this temple. In between you can see Nirbikal Siddhisthal as well. There is another temple a bit far from the hill. In fact, this temple stays on an island on Brahmaputra river. This is Sri Umananda temple. This island is known as the smallest inhabited riverline island in the world. Lots of boats are available on the bank of Brahmaputra to take visitors to the island. Normally, they charge 60 to 100 rupees for up and down. Gochiva is said to have resided here in the form of Bhayananda. According to the Kalika Purana, at the beginning of the creation, Gotshiva sprinkled ashes at this place and imparted knowledge to Goddess Parvati. The name Umananda comes from two words, namely Uma which means another name of Goddess Parvati and Ananda which means happiness. It is believed that people worship here on Amavasya day when it falls on Monday brings the highest bliss. According to me, it takes 3 to 4 days minimum to cover the entire area of the temple complex and the Umananda temple. If you need any assistance or have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section. Jai Makamakya.